If you find that you've got a wobbly spoke or a broken spoke, or you've completely knocked your wheel out of whack, hopefully I can get you back on the trail with just a spoke key and a pencil with an elastic band. Now it's important to note that there's no substitute for a professional wheel builder. So what I'm about to show you is more of a temporary fix. It'll get you to the end of a trail. It might even get you to the end of a holiday, but you need to book in with a local bike shop or a wheel builder as soon as possible. So this rim is suspended around the hub and is obviously attached by the spokes. Now spokes will pull on the left hand side and on the right hand side and an even tension will keep it in the center. If any of the tension is loosened, say on one side, then the rim will start to pull towards the more tension side. So equally, if you lose tension in a couple of spokes, then the rim will start to bend towards the tension side. And that's when we start seeing a wiggle in the rim or a buckle. So what we need to do is tighten those back up to get it back into a straight line. So another thing that's important to note is that wheel manufacturers will specify what tension a spoke has to be. This is much like the torque settings on a bolt or a particular component. You don't wanna over tighten these because it can even pull the nipple through the rim and damage it completely. This is why when we're tightening up, we're gonna err on the side of loose because it's nicer on the wheel to be looser than it is to be tighter. But it's also another reason why you need to get your wheel to a local bike shop or a wheel builder to make sure that they torque it back up to the manufacturer's tension settings. So I've actually got Rich Payne's back wheel here. Um, after a hard week of shredding in Malaga. Now, he's not exactly a heavy rider, but he is a hard rider. But even a light rider like myself will eventually knock a wheel out of true, just from forces into the corner or from hard knocks and landings. It will put stress on this wheel, whether it's carbon or aluminium, and it will knock the tension out on these spokes. So what I've got here is I've got a few loose spokes Luckily, I've still got all the nipples intact, even though they are severely loose, which means I can tighten them back up and even straighten them a bit. If you've lost any of the nipples into the rim, maybe they're rattling around, or if you've broken a spoke completely, you might wanna take that spoke out for safety sake, or at least wrap it around another spoke, or even tape it there, just so it doesn't rub on your frame or get caught in your drivetrain. So what you're gonna need is a spoke key. Now I've got a Park Tool Workshop spoke key here, but you often have spoke keys on your multi-tools, so take a look at that. And that will just tighten up the nipple and basically stop it from disappearing into the rim forever, because then you're gonna to have to take your tire off and your rim tape off to get that back out, which you don't really wanna do on a trail. Once you've tightened that up, just make sure that it's secure, but also check to see if any wobbles have developed. You wanna make sure that the tire and the rim don't wobble into your frame and rub against it. You wanna make sure that your tire clearance is still good. Any rubbing might rub away at your paintwork, but at worst, it could even rub a hole into your frame while you're riding back. So without a professional wheel building jig, like this one behind me, the best thing to do is to turn your bike upside down because you can move your wheel backwards and you can see whether it's straight and you can also work on any of the nipples that come your way that are loose. And it's also good to look down at the tire because the whole righty tighty method is gonna work when you're looking down at the tire because basically a nipple is like a bolt that screws onto the spoke. So in order to tighten it up, it will be clockwise as you're looking at it down towards the hub. So you're gonna give your spokes a little squeeze and try and identify those loose spokes. So this one's pretty loose here. And the reason for that is because the nipples become loose and it starts to work 
off of the spoke and into the rim. So tightening up moves it along the spoke and away from the rim, which in turn pulls on the rim and pulls on the spoke. So that's how we get it tighter. So again, you're gonna take your spoke key and it's gonna be righty tighty clockwise as if you were looking at it. And we're just gonna turn that until it starts to become a bit tighter. And we're literally just nipping it up a little bit so it's a lot firmer, but we're not gonna put a lot of tension on it because we don't wanna over tension this because that's like over torquing a bolt on a precious component. So we're tightening this up a little bit. You shouldn't make it too tight. It shouldn't be creaking or anything. And you're trying to match the tension of the other spokes. Although do bear in mind that you may have knocked them all out of whack. They may not be accurate. Feel isn't a great way of testing and you're definitely still gonna need to go to that bike shop to get this sorted properly. But that will at least stop the nipple from falling into the rim and it should get you back home. So if you've got a loose spoke like this one where the nipple is almost all the way off and you can't even get a key onto it just yet, don't worry, you can just kind of manipulate it out and then just use your fingers to wind it. Remember, you're going clockwise as you're looking down at it and wind it onto the spoke until you can start to see it better and put a key onto that. So hopefully all of your nipples are back onto the spokes and everything is reasonably tightened up, but not over tightened and any broken spokes are out of the way so you can safely ride home. Uh, what you wanna do is roll your wheel backwards and check the clearance on your wheel. You don't know if tightening up some of those spokes may have now pulled it out of line. So do check the clearance. So if you haven't got clearance and it is really quite wonky, then you might need to add a little bit more tension onto those loose spokes to get it back to straight. So remember what I said about the rim favoring the side of the tensioned spokes? You need to tighten up those loose spokes a little bit more to get it back into place. Now the best way to check this is to get a pencil and an elastic band or a zip tie will do this, but I favor a pencil and an elastic band because you can move it. And basically you're gonna use this to check where the bend is in your rim because it will move away and towards the pencil. So you can start to work out which spokes are the pesky spokes that are causing the bend in your wheel. So you're basically going to take your pencil and put it on top of the frame get your elastic band and hook it around the pencil. And you're basically just trying to make the pencil stay in one place quite close to the rim. Because as we start to roll the wheel backwards, it will let us know whether the rim's coming closer or getting further away. So my pencil is scraping between these two spokes. So it's too close to me, it's too far this way. So it could be that this spoke, which reaches to the left side or to the near side of the hub is pulling it too tight. Or it could be that this spoke above, which is going to the opposite side is too loose. So it's letting it fall over this side. So giving it a good wiggle, that's actually quite loose. So I'm inclined to think that the loose spoke is the problem. So I will tighten that up a little bit in this instance. So actually tightening that up half a turn was enough to tighten it and to move it away from the pencil. I would always do a quarter turn or a half turn if there's a lot of movement, but better to go with a quarter turn and then move it back to the pencil, check to see if it's scraping, if it is, carry on and just go in half or quarter turn increments just so you don't go too mad in the opposite direction. So this is part of the problem solving now is just checking to see if it's going to be closer to the pencil or further away and making tiny little adjustments here and there in order to straighten it up. So 
a little bit of backing off on that side, I think. So the pencil doesn't scrape anymore. And then that should do it. A tiny bit of movement is absolutely fine because you're gonna get this to a wheel builder who's going to tension this up to manufacturer's spec anyway, but this should be much safer to ride to the end of a trail, possibly to the end of a holiday, but do keep an eye on it. So that's pretty good. There's only a tiny bit of movement and that I can live with. Okay, that's probably about as good as I'm gonna get it by hand. Rich's wheel looks reasonably straight and it's all intact now. So if you've followed along, then hopefully you can get to the end of your trail, or maybe even the end of your holiday on a wheel like this. But do remember that you've done this by hand, so you still are gonna need to take this to a professional to make sure it's all tensioned correctly because a properly tensioned wheel will last a lot longer and it'll be a lot safer as well. If you found this helpful, then let us know in the comments below how it went and give us a thumbs up. See you soon.